It's been two years since we checked in with Ashley Baglin of Ferdinand, Indiana. One year after her husband, Mike, was found shot and killed in the cab of his semi. She's been busy raising her daughter. It's a little difficult around those, you know, normal holidays, like, you know, like Father's Day. That's a difficult one because she sees all of her little classmates, their, their fathers or grandfathers come in and her, her grandfather's around a lot. Um, but, you know, n nothing really replaces the dad. And that's, that's a hard thing that this year she kind of more tuned into when the dads were around for Father's Day. And she was kind of sad on that day. And, and pushing for Mike's law to pass. It's legislation in honor of her late husband that she says would protect not only truck drivers, but anyone on the road, allowing a person to carry a loaded firearm across state lines for protection, something Ashley hopes could save a life. You know, I'm not saying that if Mike would have had a concealed firearm in his cab somewhere, could he still be with us today? I don't know. I wasn't there, but who knows? Mm -hmm. And if it saves one life, mm -hmm. One life. Right now, she's working with Mike's Law organizers to get the legislation passed. A change.org petition to the NRA to endorse it has close to the 10,000 signatures it needs. As far as the case into Mike's death, Ashley says, unfortunately, things haven't changed. She's not aware of any leads or possible suspects and says little to no information has been released by the Detroit Police Department about what happened to Mike in the summer of 2014. Honestly, I've never spoken to people who are more callous and cold. Um, and, and they just say, this is, this is normal. This happens all the time up here. That they don't understand why it means so much to us. And it's sad to see that reality for them. All Ashley knows is Mike's body was found in his truck in an abandoned parking lot across the field from the facility he was supposed to be delivering to. At the time, Ashley was 17 weeks pregnant with their daughter, a little girl who's now nearing her third birthday this month. I was trying to explain to her, you know, daddy's always with you. He's, he's never gone. He's just, he's different from other daddies. So it's a, it's a blessing and it's a, it's a burden at the same time to try to explain to her mm -hmm. who he is and where he is now. Walk through any high school hallway today and you'll see and hear a lot of this. A rush of students headed to class and lots of chatter for a few brief moments. But for some, the minutes in between classes are silent and lonely. And that's something senior Kaylee Rumsey wants to change. It connects, it connects people and gives them a little bit of joy. She's in charge of Harrison High School's first American Sign Language Club. It's part of her senior project and it's something she started after she heard someone talking about wanting to learn how to sign. So for the past few months, Harrison's ASL club has met every single week, learning new signs and communicating with people they may not normally speak with. Uh, it's really cool because, you know, now now there are people that they'll come up to you in the hallway and they'll like they'll sign their name. And they're like, nice to meet you. Hope you're having a good day. Things like that. Things that I normally wouldn't get to encounter here at Harrison. Senior Lauren Albright has been involved from the start. And I always thought it was cool, but I never knew how to go about it or what resources you could use. Mm -hmm. But now that I know it's there mm -hmm. and it's really cool to learn, mm -hmm. um, I love doing it. Lauren not only embraced this as an opportunity to grow, but to connect with her friend who's suffering from severe hearing loss. Someone she now practices her signing with on a weekly basis. That friend is Kaylee Rumsey. Lauren, Lauren is an amazing friend. It's, it's, it's such an incredible thing to, to see that someone, um, someone cares for you in that sense, that they, they want to go above and beyond to make sure that they can, they can communicate with you, to make sure that you're, you're doing okay, things like that. And that hearing loss has affected Kaylee for a long time. She says right now she hears almost nothing in her right ear. It's interesting for me being on that that side or that section that I, I need it. I depend on it in a sense in loud areas, uh, passing period in the hallways. I can't hear anything. Their group is 17 members strong and after graduation in May, Kaylee says younger students will lead the group. 
connecting students here in the hallways at Harrison High School. I think one thing that I, I want people to know is that you don't have to be scared to come up and talk to someone who can't hear you. Um, they will, they'll smile and they'll read your lips or if they don't read lips, you can write on paper that you, you can find, you can find any way to communicate with someone, but to, to sign to someone, you know, have a great day, I hope, how are you doing, things like that, that brings, that brings a little joy to them and it's something that I thought everyone in the community needs to, needs to lo know or learn. In Evansville, Lauren Artino, 14 News. Here's a wall. Yep. Gorgeous. 88-year-old Larry Walker almost missed this past Saturday's trip to Washington, D.C. with Honor Flight of Southern Indiana. I wasn't going to go till I decided last minute that I'm going to take this trip and thank God I did. On a rainy Saturday in D.C., Walker joined 80 fellow veterans. Armed with their ponchos and umbrellas, they braved the weather and toured war memorials built in their honor. And you guys are just tough. Like this, is a little bit of rain doesn't bother you at all. Oh, yeah, well, you know, that's where we were brought up. That's where you were brought up. <laughs> yeah. Is this the first time you've been here? Yes. Is it? Yeah, first time I've been here. This memorial's my favorite. Yeah. In 1951, a scared 21-year-old Walker left his family's farm in Hartford City, Indiana, for Korea. Seoul, Korea was flat as a pancake. There wasn't another building standing. In. Walker served as a corporal in the Army, delivering supplies to the front lines. He came home eight months later. I think it said 37,000 soldiers uh, died in the Korean War. It's amazing, amazing how they put all this together and for us veterans, it's just breathtaking. Honor Flight of Southern Indiana takes this trip twice a year, every year. They give high priority to our older veterans and they also visit the Vietnam War Memorial, Arlington National Cemetery, and watch the changing of the guard at the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier. All of this free of charge for our veterans. Just everything is just breathtaking. I loved it all and uh, probably never get a chance to see it again, but at least I got to see it. A chance to see it and to reflect on their comrades who never made it home. God bless our veterans. Give her life for our country. Heroes. Mm -hmm.